So I'm extracting cores from the timbers, um, trying to get down the radius of the tree to get as many rings as possible. Uh, you can't see them too well on here because it's just come out, but these will be taken away and cleaned up so you can get uh, a sample like this where you can see the rings very clearly. And then they are measured very accurately. The theory being that the variation in width from year to year is because of the weather. But every tree does its own thing if the tree next door dies or it's in great competition or whatever. So we take several cores, match them to each other. That filters out, filters out the individual tree variation and gives us the pattern from the weather. And then we can slot that into a database and hopefully date the year that every ring was formed. The other thing I'm looking for is evidence of the outside of the tree, the sap with the living bit of the tree. And there's a little bit on the end of here you might be able to detect slightly different colour. Um, and if we've got that, if we've got all of that, we can tell the very year that the tree was cut down. In fact, with oak, we can tell the time of the year that the tree was cut down. And the trees were used uh, while they were still green. Um, so very quickly after being cut down, because dry wood's very difficult to work. So if you date the tree when the tree was cut down, you've basically dated the construction within a year or two. Well, I'm looking for two things, really. I'm looking for numbers of rings in the, in the wood. Because it's pattern matching, we need as many as possible. And I'm looking for evidence of the outside of the tree. So I'm looking for particularly wobbly bits like this, where that's the outside of the tree where the bark sat, uh, rather than this, which is squared off as it's been converted to make a timber for building. So this, this comes out fairly rough, as you can see. Um, what I do is take it home, put it on a belt sander with very fine grits to get down to a, a nice smooth surface where you can see the rings really clearly and then it goes under a microscope and I, I measure them accurately. Yeah, we've got now something like two and a half thousand sites across the whole country, so it will match against all of the, well, well, put it against all of those, it will probably match the ones from within a 50 mile radius better than the others, but it will match across the country to some extent. And of course you can tell where the timber came from if it's been imported, so in, in um, towns where maybe it's on the coast, you might have timbers being brought round from other parts of the country. Elm's absolutely horrible. Um, it grows in a very odd way. Uh, sometimes you can't even match one radius of the tree to another uh, radius. It, it has what we call low bait growth. It, it has rings that go out in all sorts of funny directions. And quite often it will grow very rapidly for a long time and then suddenly slow down and have very narrow rings. So it's very difficult to match against anything. Uh, I think in 40 odd years I've, I've matched about three or four pieces of elm and the rest is all rubbish. So what can you do to date it if you can't use dendro? Uh, well, the actually quite exciting new techniques being developed right now in the University of Swansea where they're looking at oxygen isotopes that form in the tree rings. So we've supplied them with dated bits of oak and they've built up a chronology of how the oxygen isotopes, which basically are, are measuring rainfall, differences from year to year. Um, and that goes across species, so because the rainfall is the same being taken in by all the trees and converted into wood. Um, so uh, quite excitingly we can now begin to date elm through oxygen isotopes but it's in the early days of that yet. Okay, so how far have you got with this Stratfire project? How many houses have you? Uh, I've lost count of how many I've done but it's, uh, it's probably half a dozen or so at the moment. Um, and there's several more to do, um, and we're, we're looking, as you know, at um, how they relate to the great fire that swept through the town, what's been renewed, what was around before the fire and that has still existed. Are you finding any evidence of fire in the buildings that are left? Uh, occasionally. Um, I mean, quite often they're just destroyed and rebuilt, but occasionally you can see burnt timbers and um, you know, signs of smoke and things all over the place. But that's confusing because a lot of the early buildings, of course, um, they didn't have chimneys. The smoke wafted up through and coated the, the timbers in soot, but that looks rather different to charring from, from burning. 